Hi everyone, this is Carrick. Welcome to Yoga 101. This practice is it's designed to be a, an active practice where you can get a good workout, you'll get a good stretch, you'll work on some strength. Um, and in each Yoga 101, I focus on one main pose. We'll do other poses, we'll do more than just one pose, but we'll focus on one pose and that pose um, will guide the rest of the practice. Um, we'll do the pose more than one time so that you can feel and experience different elements of the pose. So let's get started. Um, turn to one side of your mat and press back to downward facing dog. Set your feet about hip width apart at the back of the mat. So as you look back at your feet, split your mat roughly in thirds with your feet. As you look forward to your hands, um, hands outer shoulder width apart. Um, if you have a standard two foot wide mat, your pinkies will be really close to the edge of the mat, maybe even hanging off the edge of the mat, depending on how wide your shoulders are. From your heart, push out through your hands and from your heart, lift back through your hips. Just stretch your spine, stretch your arms, stretch long front to back. And then walk your feet all the way forward to the front of the mat. Set your feet about hip width apart at the front of the mat. Inhale to lengthen, reach your heart forward, and then exhale to fold. Let's do that a couple more times. Inhale to lengthen, heart forward. Exhale to fold. One more time, inhale, come up halfway. Exhale to fold in deeply. So for today's pose, we'll focus on warrior two. Inhale, reach your arms up over your head. Exhale and draw your hands to your heart. It's a very common yoga pose in many of the sequences that you'll find on ice water yoga as well as in yoga studios. You'll do one or two um, warrior twos and um, I'll, I'll explain why it's maybe one of the more common poses. Inhale, sweep your arms over your head, reach up. Little soft bend in the knees, exhale, fold forward, touch the ground. Inhale to lengthen, reach your heart forward and then exhale, plant your hands and step back to the top of a push up. Keep your elbows over your wrists, lower to the bottom of the push-up. Please keep your shoulders a little bit above your elbows when you lower to the bottom of the push-up. So your, elbow, your shoulders do not sink below the elbows, but they stay lifted high. I know that's not easy, so work hard. Keep your shoulders lifted. Keep your rib cage lifted as well. Then release your hips and thighs to the ground. Draw your shoulders back and lift your chest, cobra pose. Exhale to down dog. Pause as you look back at your feet. And then one way to measure like how long you should be in down dog, if I shift forward to plank with my shoulders over my wrists and my feet are back under my toes, so I'm in like a perfect push-up position, shoulders over the wrists and nice and long in the spine. When I move back to down dog, I should just be able to push my hips back. And this is a nice long down dog for me. You could walk your feet in. Um, shorten the distance between the hands and the feet, but this is generally about the right distance, okay? All right, look forward and walk your feet to the front of the mat. Feet about hip width apart again. Inhale to lengthen, heart forward. Exhale to fold. Keep your legs steady. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, draw your hands to your heart. Let's do that again. Inhale, reach up. Exhale and fold, touch the ground. Inhale to lengthen, reach your heart forward. Exhale, plant your hands, step back to plank. Elbows over the wrists and shoulders above the elbows. So I have a straight line, a perpendicular line from my shoulders to my wrists. So I'm not back here and I'm not forward here. I'm centered right on top. Now when I lower to the bottom of the push-up, you'll notice that my elbows stay over my wrists and my shoulders move forward. My arms are bent at a roughly 90 degree angle. Inhale to cobra. Exhale to down dog. Pause and take two breaths. And then you can check that spacing in the down dog again. Plank, same foot position as down dog, roughly. You can move the feet a little bit, adjust if that feels better. But in general, the plank uh, hands and feet are set roughly in the same place as down dog. All right, look forward. Walk your feet in, inhale to lengthen, heart forward, exhale to fold, steady legs, inhale, sweep your arms over your head, exhale, draw your hands to your heart. Last sun salutation, inhale, reach up, exhale, fold to touch the ground, 
Inhale to lengthen, heart forward. Exhale, plant your hands, step back to the top of a push-up. Take a big breath in at the top of the push-up. Exhale to the bottom of the push-up. Inhale to cobra. Exhale to downward facing dog. Take two breaths here. Look forward and walk to the front of the mat. Inhale, lengthen, come up halfway. Exhale to fold. Keep your legs steady. Inhale, reach your arms up over your head. Exhale, draw your hands to your heart. Okay, so warrior two, let's start. Um, face me and take your feet wide. Separate your feet. Well, as you stretch your arms out to the sides, separate your heels as wide as your wrists. So this is too narrow for me. If I were to drop a line from my wrist to the ground, it would drop to the outside of my heel. This is, that was too narrow. This is too wide. Now if I drop the line down, it would hit my shin. All right, so somewhere in the middle. This is pretty wide. Technically, you don't have to go this wide. You don't have to separate your feet as wide as your wrists. This is about as wide as you would want to go. So this is the maximum distance between the feet for the side-facing lunges in general, okay? So I keep saying in general because there are no absolutes here. You don't have to do the pose this way every time, and you don't have to do this pose this way ever, really. Um, I'm just giving you sort of the general alignment points. This is the classic variation of the pose that I'm teaching you. Um, this is the alignment for the pose that would hopefully give you some of the maximum benefits of the pose. If you take your feet this wide, you'll be working pretty hard in warrior two, um, and it'll be safe, okay? So my ankles are as wide as my wrist. Turn your right foot out, and then bend your right knee right over your heel. Line up the heel of the front foot with the arch of the back foot, and so there's this wide stance, the full, the maximum pose for me will be front knee bent to a square, so my knee over my heel and my thigh bone parallel to the ground. And then, so it's pretty wide. I wasn't even wide enough when I took my feet out a moment ago. So I have to go a little bit wider to get this front knee bent to a square. Now your pose might be a little shorter, it might be up here. But if you go too close, like if your legs are like this in warrior two, you're not going to feel anything. You're not going to get much out of the pose. So take the feet wide to a point where you start to feel the muscles in the front thigh. By the front thigh, I mean the thigh that the leg is bent. You feel the muscles engage to support you and hold you up. If you are too close and you don't have to work at all, then why are you doing the pose, right? Let's get something out of it. Let's get some work out of this pose. So bend the front knee to a square, roughly. At least take your feet wide enough to do some work in the front leg. Bend the front knee. The arm position is fairly simple. The hands about as high as the shoulders, maybe a tiny bit higher. And then from my fingertips, I draw into my heart, so I'm pulling my shoulder blades towards each other. I'm drawing from my fingertips into my chest. My front leg, the muscles are turned on. So from my, my, calf, my calf muscle is turned on, my thigh muscles are turned on, the hamstrings are turned on, all the muscles are drawing in and keeping the leg bent to that 90 degree angle. The back leg is as straight as I can get it. I'm moving my thigh bone back. All right, one more breath here. And then straighten the right leg, turn the right foot in, and turn the left foot out. Let's just do the second side in the other direction. Bend the knee and stretch your arms. Okay, again, hands maybe a little bit higher than the shoulders, um, and then squeeze your shoulder blades onto your back. Your hips are facing the side of the mat, so they're facing me. Hips and shoulders, okay? So the four corners of your uh, torso, the hip points facing forward, 
shoulders facing forward. The tendency will be for the hips to get turned towards the side, and even maybe the shoulders getting turned towards the side. So I'll see something like this very often. Okay, so I'm gonna draw this hip back, draw this rib cage back, draw this shoulder back. So my torso is facing the side of my mat while I look forward. Uh, the space to look at is out over your front fingertips. Again, looking for the knee over the heel and the front thigh bone bent to a square. All right, pause here. Stretch your legs. Now feel this pose. So you should feel the muscles in the thigh working pretty hard to keep you up. You might feel the muscles in your butt on that side, the glute um, gluteus maximus, some of the bigger muscles, the glutes working in your hip to hold you in place. So squeeze your butt towards the floor, right, to support the weight in the hip. One more breath here. And then inhale, pull the left leg straight, turn the left foot in. Let's uh, bow forward and touch the floor. Um, if you're having a hard time reaching the floor, you can place your hands on a prop, a block, or something to support the hands. Inhale, come up halfway, lengthen forward, reach your head forward. Exhale to fold. Let's do that two more times. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale and fold. One more time. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale and fold. Pause in the forward bend here. Knees a little soft. Interlace your fingers behind your back and draw your hands up over your head. Elbows a little soft. Squeeze your feet in. Widen your hips behind you. Reach your hands high and then start to reach them forward in front of you. Just a couple of breaths here, opening the shoulders a little more. Head towards the ground, hands high and forward. One more breath. All right, release the hands to the ground. Keep the feet wide. Place your hands on your hips, knees a little soft. Inhale to stand. Turn the right foot out again. So warrior two is often a pose done early in a class um, because you're using big muscles. So those muscles, um, when you're using big muscles, it tends to warm up the body um, pretty fast. So you'll do things like lunges and warrior poses early in a class. Also, because you're using bigger muscles uh, and it doesn't require too much flexibility to do uh, a warrior pose, you'll, that's why you'll also see it towards the early part of a class. Okay, so warrior two is also related to some other poses that you may be familiar with. Um, one of them is side angle pose. So with my feet that same wrist distance apart front to back, bend the right knee to a square and put your forearm on your thigh. And so we can start here. This is side angle pose or a variation of side angle pose. Place your left hand on your hip and lean back. All right, so here is a good place to practice um, seeing the knee over the heel and finding the thigh bone parallel to the ground. Okay, and again, the, if this is too much at this point, um, if you're early in your practice, like you're newer to this practice of yoga, um, you could shorten the stance and pull the knee back. Um, something to watch for the knee. I can't really think of a time, actually I can, but in a standing lunge, we generally do not bend the knee past the heel. So I'm going to do it just for a second. You don't have to do this at all. So if my knee is here, past the heel, right? my knee is bent past the 90 degree angle, and I can already feel a lot of tension in my front knee. So um, this is starting to hurt on the inside of my knee already. So I'm gonna pull back, so my knee is right over my heel, and that's the most supportive place um, for my knee is directly over the heel. I can also pull back and make it easier on myself as well, okay? So let's go back to here, stretch the top arm over your ear, side angle pose, and the legs are pretty much the same as warrior two. The upper body is the difference. Okay, so this pose um, directly related to warrior two is, is at least the legs, the shape of the legs, okay? Inhale to stand, come up. Turn the right foot in and turn the left foot out. Bend the knee. Okay, remember, knee right over the heel, not passing it, um, directly on top. And then when I rest my forearm on my thigh, 
then there's this straight line. So my shin becomes like this pillar of support for my upper body. And again, the upper body now leaned over at an angle. The lower body in warrior two. And then we'll talk about the angle of the upper body in warrior two again in just a moment. Okay, so keep the back leg, set the thigh back. So since we have the forearm on the thigh and it's easy to look back, um, place your right hand, find the hip bone. Um, there's, a, there's a bone that sticks out. It's called the greater trochanter. Um, it's the top of the femur, and you can feel it. You can feel that hip bone on the side. Okay, and it's really the top of the, the big bone in your thigh, and it's this protrusion that goes out. So you, you should be able to feel that bone. Right? Line up the greater trochanter with your outer knee and your outer ankle, okay, which is pretty far back. So if my hips are really tight, they get pulled forward in the pose, I want to set my hip back, set the greater trochanter back in line with the outer knee and the outer ankle. So in other words, stick your butt out on the straight leg, on the front leg, you can feel your hip sticking out. So drop the front leg, draw the, drop the hip down, and then open your hips towards the side of the mat. So in this pose and in Warrior Two, I feel a stretch through the inner front thigh. I feel a little bit of a stretch on the inner left thigh as well. So, but I only feel that stretch when my legs are long, when I have a nice wide stance. Right? And then I, now from your hips, stretch your legs. Stretch the top arm over your ear. Inhale to stand. Strong legs, inhale to come up. Turn the left foot in. Turn the right foot out. Okay, so we've talked about the legs in Warrior Two. Front knee bent to a square, wide stance. Um, on the feet, line up the heel of the front foot with the arch of the back foot. So if I were to like, paint a line down the middle of my mat here. I want both feet on the line. The heel of my front foot and the second toe on the line. So imagine it's like a thin red line. And then the, the line would cut right through the back of my um, left foot, right? So I'm on a tightrope front to back. An alternative to that is to line up heel to heel. <coughs> so if your hips are super tight, and lining up heel to arch is not possible, like you just feel um, not open enough in the front of the pelvis, then you, you could line up heel to heel to make it slightly easier. Okay, but the default will be heel to arch, and then if you want to make it a little bit easier, go heel to heel if your hips are feeling super tight, um, or if you just know that your hips are super tight. Okay, um, warrior two again, bend the front knee, back leg straight, Stretch the arms. Now, the upper body in side angle pose, we were leaning over the thigh, right? So you were, there's a lean, and the torso is not centered over the hips. In warrior two, the alignment is to center the torso directly over the hips, right? So this is not centered over my hips. I'm leaning too far back. And this is not centered over my hips. I'm leaning too far forward. And that might look funny when I do that. Um, but uh, I see that all the time. Um, I see students um, leaning forward. Uh, I think what's happening is they want to get their front knee forward, and so they use their body weight to take the, the weight forward. Right? So you're not using your body weight to take the weight forward. Keep your shoulders centered over your hips, and then bend the front knee more. Right? And you're going to use the muscles in the leg to carry the knee forward rather than the weight of your upper body. And then I think that some students lean back because they want to take the pressure off the front thigh, right? They're afraid of um, putting the weight on the front leg, so they lean back. So the pose is really balanced in the middle, right? So you're not leaning forward. I think of that like leaning into the future, and then leaning back is like relying on the past. You want to stay centered right in the middle, right in the present moment is in the middle, not looking to the future, not reaching back into the past, but being right in the center, okay? All right, straighten the right leg, turn the right foot in, turn the left foot out. So it seems like a really simple pose, and, and it is. It's a relatively 
simple yoga pose, um, but so many things to think about. Bend the left knee again over your heel, warrior two. On both feet now, just for a moment, lift your toes off the ground and feel the soles of your feet, the parts of your feet that are touching the ground with your toes lifted. Push down through the big toe mounds, the inner heels, the baby toe mounds, and the outer heels. Find the four corners of both feet and press them evenly into the mat. Bend the front knee to a square. You can put your toes back down on the mat, but keep the four corners of both feet rooted. I'll say them again. The big toe mounds, the inner heels, the baby toe mounds, and the outer heels. For me, the weight tends to rock towards the outer edge of both feet in this pose. That may or may not happen for you. You might find it very easy to keep the four corners of both feet heavy. I have to focus. I have to drag my back foot forward to keep weight on the inner edge, and I have to squeeze my front shin uh, to the side in. I have to squeeze it in to keep weight to the inner edge of um, both of my feet. So do that. Hug your shins in. Hug your shins in from the outer shins towards the inner shins. Bend the front knee to a square. Stretch your arms. Make sure your torso is centered over your hips. All right, and then again, torso is relatively square towards the side of the mat, not twisted forward. All right, so if this hip is getting pulled forward, remember the greater trochanter has to stay in, align with, with, in alignment with the outer heel, right, which will twist me more, more, more open, not towards the side. Okay, so hip bone back, rib cage back, shoulders back, Upper body centered over the torso. One more breath. Inhale to stand. Turn both feet in. Unlock your knees. Bend them just a little bit. Inhale to lengthen. Come up halfway. Exhale to fold. Touch the ground. Inhale, lengthen forward. Place your left hand flat on the, on the ground. Stretch your right arm up to the sky. Let's take a little twist here. Move your hips a little to the left and draw your top shoulder back. Squeeze both shoulders back, which is similar to the alignment in the arms in Warrior Two. It's much easier in Warrior Two. The, the arm alignment is relatively easy. All right, but squeeze your shoulder blades onto your back and look up. Inhale, replace the, left, the right hand with the left, and take your right arm up. Move your hips a little to the left and draw your top shoulder back. Hug your shoulder blades onto your back and open your chest. Inhale back to the middle. Little bend in the knees. Inhale to come up. Um, heel toe your feet together. Let's stretch the shoulders just a little bit to make the arm alignment a little bit easier in the upper body. Um, find a wall, if at all possible, and place your... Uh, one hand up against the wall, a little higher than your shoulder. Stand with your feet facing the opposite direction as your hand. Feet about, about six inches off the wall. Face the opposite direction as the hand. From your hips to your armpits, get longer. And then externally rotate the arm in the socket. And what I mean by that, it's like, it's like I'm trying to turn my thumb down and my pinky up. That's an external rotation in the arm. Okay, keep that. And then turn your feet in. Draw your rib cage in and stand up tall. Breathe into your shoulder. Breathe into the top of your chest or wherever you're feeling the stretch. Fire the muscles between your shoulder blades to hug them onto your back. Inhale to the middle. Switch to the other side. Hand just above the shoulder, a little higher than the shoulder, with the palm turned up. Feet face the opposite direction as the arm. From your hips to your armpits, grow longer. Externally rotate the arm in the socket. So again, um, as I look at my hand, I'm trying to pull my pinky down. I'm sorry, I'm trying to pull the thumb down, and the pinky's rising. Right? Roll the bicep back. Now turn your feet in just a little bit to the middle of the room, and then turn your chest in the same direction. One more breath. 
All right, and then let's take this same stretch into warrior two. Last round, warrior two. Stand on your mat, separate your feet as wide as your wrist. So as we do this pose a few times, hopefully you're warm and um, you can go maybe a little bit deeper. So stretch the wrist out, heels as wide as the wrist, bend the front knee right over your heel, back leg straight. Stretch your arms. Now, just for a moment, so really common um, misalignment that I see in the pose very often is shoulders creeping up to the ears like this. It's very similar to when we're sitting at our desks or looking down at our devices, right? The shoulders creep up without us thinking about it. Warrior two, part of warrior two is to help undo that. So you flip your palms up to the sky, just like we were doing again in the shoulder stretch a moment ago. And so when you flip your palms up, you externally rotate the arms in the sockets. The tops of the shoulders move back, pull your shoulder blades down your back and lift your chest. Here's the challenge. Keep the shoulders looping back. Keep the external rotation in your upper arms from your elbows to your shoulders. Keep externally rotating the upper arms. Just flip your palm back over, okay? So turning the, arm, the palm up will help to roll the shoulder back. Keep the shoulder rolling back and then flip your hand towards the ground. Do the same thing with the other side. Palm up, keep the shoulder back, palm down. Good, stretch your legs, stretch your arms. All right, from your feet, draw into your hips. From your hands, draw into your heart. From your heart, pull into your hips. Pull all of the energy of the pose from your feet, fingertips, even from the top of your head, draw into your hips. And then from your hips, stretch back out. Stretch your legs long, stretch your arms long. One more breath. Inhale to stand. Turn the right foot in, turn the left foot out. Last time, warrior two. Bend the knee. Stretch your arms. All right, so again, what am I trying to accomplish here? I'm, I'm I, I want to work the muscles on my front leg. Um, I'm working the muscles in my hip. Um, I'm getting an opening or a stretch in the front of the thighs, in the front of the pelvis. Um, actually, inner thigh, inner thighs and front of the pelvis. Um, I'm practicing keeping my chest open, turning my biceps, externally rotating my upper arms, turning my biceps back, yet keeping my hands steady, um, palms towards the ground, and then centering my weight over my hips, right? Not leaning forward, not leaning back. And so in this very simple pose, I'm working on strength in my legs. I'm getting an opening or a stretch in my hips. Um, I'm working my shoulders, okay? I'm rolling the shoulders back, even as I keep my palms face down. And I'm finding my balance, torso centered over the hips, my upper body centered over my hips. So when you stop and think about it, there's a lot going on. Oh, and then one more thing, I'm, I'm trying to keep my feet rooted evenly into the ground. Um, one last alignment point that I, I forgot. Um, check your front knee and track the center of the knee behind the second toe. There will be a tendency in general for the knee to fall in, to collapse in. Push it out and track the knee behind your second toe. One more breath. Inhale to straighten the front leg. Turn both feet in, heel toe your feet together, and come down to all fours uh, on, the, on the mat. Um, let's just do a couple of counter stretches to uh, the warrior pose. Okay, so left leg forward for pigeon. So <laughs> warrior is a, it's such a strong and fierce pose. Um, I can feel my hips um, even maybe tightening up a little bit from holding the pose for so long, um, so many times. So um, a well-balanced practice will we'll do a couple of poses to counter some of the things that we were working really hard on in where two. All right, so left leg forward, right leg back for pigeon. Your hips... Uh, do not have to be on the ground. Like my left hip is floating off the ground right now because my hips are super tight after those warrior poses. Hug your shins in, hook your hips back and wide towards the back of your mat, and then soften your heart towards the ground 
and reach your tailbone towards the ground. From your hips, push out through your back heel, and from your hips, reach out through the top of your head. Just a couple of breaths here. And then press back to down dog. And switch sides, right leg forward. Open the knee wide and stretch the left leg back. Again, you can see how this hip is way off the ground because the, my glutes are really tight. Um, if they were more open, they might be on the ground, but they rarely hit the ground for me. So um, having the hip off the ground is okay, right? The front shin is as close to parallel to the front of the mat as possible. However, that might mean that the shin is pretty far back. This is much more comfortable for me, but now I'm not feeling much of a stretch. So I draw my shin forward to stretch the outer hip. All right, and then forearms down. Squeeze your legs in, hug your shins in, poke your hips back and wide, stretch the outer right hip. Soften your heart, lengthen from your hips out through the back foot and from your hips out through the top of your head. Just a couple of breaths. And then come, actually press back to all fours, hands and knees. And then we'll stretch the legs just a little bit more. From hands and knees, step your left foot forward and straighten the left leg. Center your hips over the right knee. The left leg is straight out in front. If, um, if you're having a hard time touching the ground, you are welcome to place your hands on props. So they could be, I could be up on blocks or something handy at home, a box or something to rest your hands on. But assuming that you can touch the ground, touch the ground. Spread your toes wide on the front foot, pull the baby toe back and push the ball of the big toe forward. Reach your heart forward over your left leg. Draw your kneecap in and soften your heart. Just a couple of breaths. I can tell that I worked hard just doing Warrior Two, because now as, I, as we stretch the hamstrings, the back of the legs, I'm shaking just trying to stretch the backs of my legs. So um, the, some of the simplest poses, Warrior Two and, and several others, um, we can get so much work done in the simple poses when we align when we take the pose to its full expression, switch sides. And what I mean by full expression is not even, it doesn't have to look like my pose, doesn't have to look like a yoga pose in a magazine. Your, the full expression of the pose is your pose in that moment, doing your absolute best to align in the deepest way, right? Doing as many of the, alignment points and um, instructions that, that I gave you and putting them into your body and just doing your best. And that is your full expression of the pose. But when we're doing things really fully, when we're doing things at the best of our ability, we can get so much out of these yoga poses. If we're not thinking about it, if we're um, not pushing ourselves, if we're just kind of going through the motions, um, we can still get things done, and, and yoga is still good for us, but we won't get the maximum benefit out of the poses. So, you know, here at Ice Water Yoga, really um, all of the teachers, we want you to get the most out of your time with us. And the way that you'll do that is to um, really follow each instruction um, to the best of your ability, and then and really working and pushing yourself to maximize your benefits um, on the mat. Okay, one more breath here. Um, so I encourage you to get to know the poses in a way that really um, you, you get a lot of work done and, and you feel like you've accomplished something, again, even in the simplest pose. So you don't have to do the most crazy, complicated, fancy um, 
stretch or pose or whatever, um, you can do something as simple as warrior two, get a lot done, work hard, um, and, you know, have some benefits uh, from the simplest of poses. And that's really uh, Yoga 101, uh, this series. Um, we'll break down each pose like this um, and at the same time get a good workout from the simple poses. All right, so left leg forward, right leg back, drop. Actually, you can stay up on your right hand, reach back with your left hand and grab your foot. So we work the thighs a lot holding the lunge, the warrior two. So now grab your foot, pull your, actually poke your hip back into your heel, get your hip as close to your heel as possible, maybe even touching the hip to the heel, and then spread your toes wide, hold on to the baby toe side of your foot. You have an option to put your forearm on the ground. You don't have to do that, but you could. Just get a good stretch in the, in the right thigh. Reach your head forward, push your knee back, twist and look up. Listen to your breath. All right, release the foot and switch sides. And really to get the most out of your time um, on your mat, um, you'll get the most out of your time when your pose is um, you know, done with your full effort when your pose is kind of at the maximum um, openness or fullness um, that you can manage. And, and that will change from day to day. Some days you'll be able to take your feet wider. Some days you'll go deeper into a pose. Other days you'll have to back off. But knowing where that edge is is really important. Right? Finding the boundary and then just leaning up against the boundary, sometimes pushing the boundary and going farther and sometimes backing off and taking it easy. Um, but in general, we'll get the most out of the practice when we know where those boundaries are, when we're right up against them. Um, and so that's what Yoga 101 is all about. This series is all about kind of finding the, the full pose and we'll define the traditional variation and then hopefully helping you to find your full pose. Okay, so this concludes the Warrior Two practice. Um, I will see you next time. Thank you.